Blackbird sitting on the wall, watching all the Earths fall. Did they shout for help or push them down? Secret arm with Ember Crown. In war, intelligence is key to victory, asks any historian. And they would say the reason why certain wars in the past were won was because of the intelligence alone provided to their forces. This is why a good intelligence agency can save many lives from just a small amount of info given. It's because of these very people that are able to stop threats from happening, not all the time, but sometimes. This is where Corvus comes in and tries to fill that gap for the Emperor and for the citizens of Bastion. Corvus are an intelligence and diplomatic agency specialising in covert operations and answer only to the Emperor of Antium. Their job is to gather important intel and scout out any threats towards humanity and put a stop to them by themselves or by the help of the freelancers, but only if the situation requires bigger and larger firepower. They are the eyes and ears of Bastion. How they came to existence isn't fully explained as in game the law contacts taught us briefly by the organisation as a whole, rather than their origins. What we know origin wise is that the name Corvus gets its name from a legional dawn lancer called Sanadim, who was nicknamed Corvus for their stealthy methods of taking out targets, and after the small black bird, which is known to remember things for a very long time, and be quite vicious when threatened. The legacy of Sanadim is brief and unknowing as to what her role was in Legion of Dawn, but from a short contact story, we know that Sanadim chased after a being called the Fenwatcher, and both Lancer and Fenwatcher did battle until both of them collapsed. But supposedly Sanadim came back, but changed. I won't fully delve into this area as this bit of the context doesn't seem to hold enough substance for me or anyone to delve further into. Maybe in the future, once more information about the Lancer and the past events are expanded on, I can relook into this area. Now on the Corvus, as a well-known agency, they have an extensive network of spies, diplomats and intelligent agents out of the field all doing their parts for the greater good, which sounds very similar to our real-world examples like the MI6 or the FBI, who are also tasked with building relations with other countries, but also keeping the peace but less sci-fi involved, but similar goals. Key people in the agency that are known are Agent Tassin, who deals with the many ongoing operations out on the field and provides information to the player, but not too much and Agent Zev, who links in with us for most of the Stronghold expeditions and provides intel plus witty comments every now and then. We don't know how that ranking system within the agency works, and noticing them out in the wild isn't hard if they're using their javelins, but normal field workers not so much. If I had to guess, I would say they'd probably dress like Agent Zev, wear a long white overcoat type jacket with sporting gloves and boots to match, which must be the standard uniform for standard field workers, as Zev is the only field worker in the game to be present and wearing such a unique attire. The javelins tend to sport a white and light green colour to the armour which makes them easy to be noticed and distinguish against other factions. When we look at Agent Tassin on the other hand, she sports a completely different attire from the rest, which may be linked to her position being a lot higher than some of the other agents. She sports a stylish long red jacket and trousers with a sort of futuristic military design towards it, from someone who may be considered a captain or high ranking team leader. Nothing more is known about her appearance, but this could be a clue as to what the higher level agents of Corvus supposed to wear. Like her real world counterpart, most Corvus agents dress up in disguise to collect information and blend in with the populace, while out in the field, so you never know 100% who is an agent and who is just a citizen. Although in some cases they do make themselves clear that they are an agent just like Nadia, but this is only made evident once you probe her for more information about her husband. Although being a spy sounds amazing for the many, as it would feel like being James Bond of your very own story, the risk of course of being an agent is very dangerous, with many not returning as themselves, or not returning at all, such as the Corvus agent disguised as a regulator, but got caught by the monitor in a mission incursion, as a brief example. 9 out of 10 when they're caught, they're practically dead since there's no way out for them, since most of their missions are solo based. Although, not until they are interrogated first and then killed once everything has been collected. We only know the Dominion company to do these tactics since both factions are currently at war with each other, and both factions have spies within each other's ranks so it makes the most sense for both parties to do the same to each other when the moment is made available for them. If you haven't spoken to Nadira and her husband later on yet for their dialogue, I suggest you do as you'll see what I mean. There is also the risk of being abandoned by the government or in certain times being labelled as a traitor for doing your job. The cons outweigh the pros of being an agent, and those who sign up know the very risk of this happening to them. But if this means the world can become a better place from their sacrifice, then the risk is worth it, since loyalty is what Corvus values the most. 
But one question in my mind is, can we trust them? Just because they give us what we wanted and share the same goals and values as we do, doesn't mean they're on our side. Remember, they work for the Emperor, probably other powerful people as well. And for all we know, they may be keeping a close eye on us, just in case we get too close to the truth on a certain matter, or if we stray from their narrative. Although we can argue they informed us by the Urgoth and their supposed return, how they will deal with that threat is unknown, but we do know that we will be involved in some way. Plus, this also locks us into an agreement where we can't mention it to anyone else, so technically, whatever they're planning, we have to go along with it anyways. I'm not sure if this is because I watch too much spy films where agencies have different and dark agendas, but it's not unreasonable to doubt the trustworthiness given these reaches and connections within the world they have. Take a look at Oni in the Halo franchise for example, who had questionable agendas. Or look at Third Echelon from Splinter Cell series. All these agencies who do good all have other agendas of their own, both good and bad. Whether you trust Corvus or not is not up for debate at the moment, as we have insufficient evidence to argue a case. But before considering any actions, perhaps look at some of the things they've created and brought forward in an everyday life of Bastion, for example. They're the first group to fully utilize Cyrus' abilities when they first appeared, and use them for the long range communication, code breaking, and covert operations. Negatively though, this didn't help offer the Cyphers an opportunity to do the other jobs they may have preferred, nor were they given much rights until the Cypher Revolution was made intact, which provided extended rights to the group. It's both a blessing and a curse for the Cyphers who had to go through the events, but no more are they limited down on their choices, unless they decide to become freelancers, which become a completely new problem of his own. They also first created the Interceptor Javelin, created as a scout suit for explorative and diplomatic missions. The Interceptor is the most agile and acrobatic javelin a Lancer can find out of the three, and offers a lightning fast, close range attacks, combined with specialised weaponry, which will thrill Lancers who crave speed in the battlefield. In game, this is favoured for those that like to get up close and personal to targets, and I've seen a lot of success in following by other players who prefer small but smooth frontal fights rather than long range and drawn out engagements. Amplifiers were another tool created by Corvus to help Cyphers enhance their telepathic abilities in larger and longer range environments. They like radio towers, but smaller, but allow individuals to hook themselves up within the machine and contact pilots at much longer ranges than they currently do. Next, we have a small tool called an archive, which allows users to store a large amount of information on the stick. This item is literally a memory stick, no doubt about it, except the size of it is a lot larger compared to our real world example. But yeah, this is a futuristic version of a memory stick if you ever wanted to see one in Anthem. Lastly, we have Links, which are shortwave communication devices. They are an all-purpose communication device which allows Lancers to stay in contact with each other through a shortwave radio, as well as maintain mental contact with Cyphers. This device sounds like a walkie-talkie with the way they're described and also how Cyphers can also act as a conduit for additional parties to observe and comment on Lancer activities. The more you look into it, the more you see how these devices listed are based off real world devices. And there's probably a lot more other things by the organisation that we don't know of yet that they may have created. But this is as far as we can go with understanding the organisation, and who they are, and what their goals may be. They're an interesting bunch that strangely don't have a lot of lore based around them considering how close they are to the player character and some of the leading events in the world. Will we see more of them in the near future? Hopefully. I can see Tassin playing a major part with the rise of the Urgoth and other of humanity's threats. Perhaps we could also see the darker side of the organisation, since no agency is purely good and follow good ethics in their organisation. We'll see. So that's the end of the lore video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub and share for more similar content in the future. But for now thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.